Welcome guys. So today, uh, let's this is just small topic about the real analysis. So uh, I want to study a problem, uh, which is also uh, famous, right? So that's it's not so famous, right? But uh, it's very obvious. It's very common in the real analysis. So, so suppose f is a let's say continuous function, uh, defined on zero one. You can define on a b general, right? But uh, and uh, there's a theorem say that uh, if you zero integral zero one f squared dx becomes zero, then you can automatically say f of zero, right? At I mean at least at zero one. Uh no, I mean it's, you can prove it. Yeah, okay. Uh, if f is a continuous function defined on zero one, so there's a probably if somebody defined on the open interval, right? There then there can be a z then there will be some a problem at the at the boundary like 0, 1, right? But uh, yeah. So in this case, we define on closed interval, so nothing we we need to worry. Okay, and then, and then there's another theorem also uh, people like to ask is that if for, for an uh, greater or equal to 0 uh, integer, then the f of x, and if f of x from uh, 0, 1 infinity is 0, dx for all n, then one can also conclude that uh, f is 0. At uh, zero. Okay, so uh, today, I mean, I just want to prove this too. Okay. Okay, so let's quickly see. So the first one is say what? Say f of square dx is zero from zero one. I will imply f equals to one, right? On zero one. So now f is a continuous function uh, defined to be on zero one. Hmm? Close interval. So the proof is uh, so this is just a simple analysis, right? Suppose not. So basically, suppose not means that uh, there is it is some c uh, in zero one such that the f of c is non uh, great uh, f of square c, right? F of square c is basically uh, f of c if a continuous function defined on zero one, right? So L square of C must have grid was larger than zero, right? At some point. Some point? Uh, at some point C. So basically uh, you can view uh, something this is F square F square X and then you don't know uh like zero one and then you don't you, you only know at some point C, right? Then it will grid then it will be larger than zero. Right, but uh, f is continuous, but f square is continuous, right? Because f is continuous, right? So the, that means that uh, you can there's a open interval, small open there is this some small interval let's say c minus delta c plus delta, such that f of square always la uh always larger than zero uh for all x. Okay, so basically in this small region. This integral always greater or equal to zero. Then, uh, then there is a contradiction, right? The reason is that zero one f squared dx will larger than if you only do in the small integral here because this is the non-negative function, right? But in this region, uh, it's already greater or greater than zero, right? Because this is a continuous function and non-negative, and uh, and the uh, uh, sorry, it's non it's po exact positive. So this is positive function on this interval, right? And but I say this is zero, right? So there is a contradiction. Right? Because zero zero cannot <laughs> zero cannot uh, great, greater than zero. Okay. So this is the first proof. Uh usually people also uh, like to ask this. So I just want to make a video. Okay, second let's say that uh, if if somebody if all the uh, um, belongs to positive uh uh, non-negative integer such that uh, x and f d is equal to zero, and then you can conclude f is zero. And the reason is that uh, uh, there is a this theorem called stone wire trust. Stone wire trust means that uh, if your function is on the continuous function on a closed interval, then you can always find a polynomial function. So p of x belongs to let's so it's a real polynomial function, such as f minus p can be arbitrarily small. So basically, for any integer, oh sorry, for any arrow, you can always find a polynomial function to approximate this f. 
So suppose you have f, then you can always fi find some polynomial function. Okay, some polynomial. Uh, which f minus p, the maximum of f minus p is less than epsilon. So whatever f, for every epsilon you take, you can always find a polynomial which is very close to this f. So this is the key idea. So we can just, so the key idea is that we use the stone wire truss to change, to, uh, to make this problem the same as our previous one, okay? So maybe let's, let's do some, so there is nothing uh, difficult, so let's try to solve it. <sighs> okay, so, okay, so suppose uh, I want to, well, I try, try to compute this, right? So this is basically, let's say, f of x minus, that's, so I can, uh, for epsilon larger than zero, there is this p, right? Such a f minus p of x. Okay. Uh, this, so I, uh, I mean, I can write this one as this one. So this minus. Uh, mm, uh, let me see how to how to easily change it. So. Right, so if we, we start from 0, 1, into f square, right, this is also uh, 0, 1, right? So I can write this uh, list. Uh, the reason is that uh, I already know that all polynomial times f of x is exactly 0, right? But for epsilon larger than 0, I can always find some p, uh, which is that's such that uh, p is very, very close to f, right? So it becomes this. Right, but I know that uh, since f is continuous, right, so 0, 1, f of x is just a finite number. It's a, it can be integral, right? So this is just a, a number. <laughs> right. So so that means if, so it's just uh, some number, right? So so I can, but I can choose epsilon, right? I can choose epsilon arbitrary small. Right, so basically 0, 1, f square dx should be 0, right? Because I can choose epsilon, so if I, okay. Since this is already greater or equal to 0, so I can just write it as this. And I can choose this, so this is 1, right? I can ch always choose, so if I take absolute value of this, right? And uh, you can change it into this one, right? This one. Okay, I can change it to this. Uh, maybe let me just clearly write down. So dx, 0, 1, right? So this will less than uh, 0, 1, right? I can change it as epsilon times f of x as absolute value dx, right? So 0, 1, uh, f is continuous, so its absolute value is also continuous, right? So f of x, absolute value of dx is just some number, right? So this is just some fixed number, right? But I can choose, so I can always choose epsilon to, to be arbitrary small. Then this will prove that f of square dx should be zero, right? Because epsilon can be choose arbitrary small. Then become one, right? So the same reason uh, f, of, f is zero. Okay, that's it. And I will see you guys in the uh, next uh, videos.